Okay, so today is gonna be the big reset for Twist, but I don't know. I deliberately keep myself in the dark. I don't know if that means it'll be a different mode altogether where it's not the class cards only anymore. It'll be something else. That seems a little disingenuous because they sold those decks for that format only in the shop. So imagine spending money on that that you can only use it for a month. Or I think what it might be is that they'll just let you change what expansions worth of cards you can use. If they do that, I'll be very happy to try Renounce Darkness and things like that. Kind of going against my underplayed round robin thing, but whatever. That's like the best iteration of Renounce Darkness ever. Finally, it'll actually be good, by which I mean still mediocre, but like, you know, you only have class cards anyway. So that's kind of how I built it, just so you get as many cards from Renounce as possible. Uh, does that mean it's actually out yet, the expansion, or what? I, uh, Old Ori Grand Championship take up arms in the glorious combat. The combat grounds in Old Ori are open for you to test your metal. Complete quests and earn. Collect event XP. Let's see if there's any cool heroes that we want to work towards. Otherwise, it is a death knight. So that actually almost makes me want to do it. But I kind of gave up on the completionist challenge because I failed that, that tavern brawl one. And then, like, a lot of them are just going to be from the shop anyway. But how would you... How would you even do this? 100, 100. You'd have to play like every day, which is where these games can sometimes be annoying. But like, I just don't care. Although the one thing I want... Oh, is, is it actually out for real? I don't even know. New reward track. I guess it makes sense. The beginning of the month. But again, how is that going to affect Twist as a thing? If you forge a card this game, craft a custom weapon. Yeah, let's see if they find... Oh, that is sick. What is that? Oh, that looks amazing. Targaris card bag actually pretty worthy of, of the name drop there, but no did they add like the hundred uh, Hero for a death knight or not a death knight. Yeah, yeah Because that's the only one they don't have one for they did add one for a demon hunter Yeah, it's too much work to try to keep up with it I was just trying to keep up with the cosmetics for once in my whole hearthstone career because I never bothered doing it before That actually looks pretty sick for the druid uh, they still didn't. That's interesting. Why not add uh, Nurzul in the frost armor as I keep practically begging for them to do that? And they even had it in like the cutscene in the, the little campaign thing. Oh, is Sargeras actually going to be a card or he's going to be a hero? Or he's going to be a skin? I don't know. He should be like all three. Out of this world visuals. Wait, 1999. Oh no, he's just part of that. Wait, how did I not see him there? I saw his card back and was enamored with that. You know, they're pulling out all the big gods. First, the Lich King, now Sargeras himself. Where is he? I saw his icon. Unless it's just like a card of his. He should almost... Oh, oh my god. Yeah, why do Warlocks get the coolest stuff? Jaraxxus, Nazoth. Oh, my epic rant about the Sargeras got cut off. I was saying, like, why do Warlocks get all the coolest cards? Like, uh, or heroes even. Jaraxxus, Nazoth now Sargeras like it makes sense sort of that they're warlocks but they're kind of more than that they're just like everything that they need to be like yeah warlocks use a sword like a hero class the way they and uses his father's sword but basically this sort of shows you the value of this expansion compared to like the last one. Oh, you last time you got death metal king and all these kind of gimmicky stupid ones like oh make everybody play an instrument and play into the contrived premise of the expansion this one's just legitimately sargeras it's not like mecha jaraxxus or or some other gimmick on him it's just legitimately him right those are kind of the best ones where they're not beating around the bush they're actually pulling out their their aces which probably means this will be the last expansion in the history of the game it has the whole final boss of the universe before they retcon it into, oh my goodness, it's going to be the Void Lords now, which is, you know, maybe ex post facto justification. Like, oh, well, where else do you think the old gods came from? Well, the presumption would be they were already there. That's why they're called old gods. Like, they were there all along on the planet. Like, you, you don't know why. Or somehow the Titans created them or inadvertently created them. Or like the act of killing them would destroy the planet. Yeah, let's see with respect to the twist mode what it's actually going to be. Locked. In less than a month. Different expansions can be used every month, but it'll still be the same. With a rotating rule set, this game is locked until the next season starts. So when is that? Then I guess I don't even get to do it. Uh, that's weird. Like the, This is the next season. What do you mean? What are we in then? Like what if I get Legend and Standard? It won't count because we're in limbo between seasons. I can't believe I missed that Tranquility one that was so cool. Because I just wasn't playing uh, Standard, I guess, at that point. Or, or Ranked. I was only doing, like, the, the whatever, Permadeath Game Mode Round Robin. Where, like, I do want, if I get first top three places here. I don't think I ever got top one in this, actually. 
I came very close, but then the game kind of dragged out and I just couldn't beat the first place had like some busted stuff. I can get like top three pretty consistently. I just don't really like the mode. It's auto battler, almost as bad as Marvel Snap. Well, I kind of wanted to do the twist mode, so now I'm not even so sure. Maybe I should just do some other fun decks. Like I'm craving my whole anti-spell thing again. I've been depriving myself too much of that, but I kind of do want to give these, wait, why can't I use anything? Oh, you know what? I, I like the twisting so much that I got rid of my... Why does my stream keep <clears throat> bugging out, dude? Why does it always happen with Hearthstone of all things? It seems to have actually worked, though, so... Um, yeah, well, that's weird. It, that guy wasn't even good anyway. You're supposed to do, like, Abusive Sergeant slash... You know, let's just stay within the... Within the means of whatever we have here, like... Only class card, so we'll still play into the same gimmick. If your hero attacks an enemy, this attacks it too. You don't really want high cost stuff, but <clears throat> that's kind of boring. After a friendly minion dies, they'll 3 damage to a random enemy. That could actually fit a little bit, and it fits in with the Naga thing. Yeah, we're, we're almost reverse engineering it here. So we'll do the same thing like where we go in order and just wait until we. Because, yeah, look at, look at what they have in the shop now. If they have those same decks. It would mean they would have to commit to that format for longer, right? Or does that mean those are gone? Like, it's 3200 for a class specific deck for whatever, the twist mode. Let's give Priest the honors because that is truly one of my most underplayed classes in the history of the game. And you can kind of see why, because I don't like those really slow paced type of games, even though I did love Armor Warrior and some of those, but those somehow didn't feel like they would always drag out. You would still beat them in some. They would just run out of removal for your big stuff. You would have more more removal than them. You would just have so much armor. You could kind of... It was control, obviously, but... It was in a simpler state of the game where maybe it didn't feel as bad. I got, like, only to silver maybe last month, but again, I play such short sessions that it's kind of hard to do anything with it. But this deck I don't even really mind, but it's not going to be as good. Or who knows, maybe it'll somehow be better. Because I took out whatever few class, uh, non-class cards there were, which, I don't know. I, I kept not getting the Valk here, even when I was playing it in this. Like, it doesn't really matter between the two. But you got to get that Sister Slavana, and then you can be off to the races. But I would always get her, like, as my last card, or I wouldn't even get her at all. Yeah, that's the whole beauty of playing it in bite-sized things, too, and I don't even hold that against the game, but how much have I played Hearthstone over the years? It's kind of hard to measure, actually. It's it's a ton. It's so much of it is just digging around with different, uh, like, Mark MKZ or whatever his name is. On YouTube, I always see his suggestions because he does stuff similar to me, but he commits to a lot harder because he obviously plays the game a lot more. I've maybe been using this Lilith card back a bit too for too long. Maybe I'll do it like that. I'll do the round robin, and then if I lose with all three, then I have to move on to another class. It just means that I'm giving the ones that I haven't played priority, which technically that isn't even true either, because uh, I'm giving the ones priority, except the Death Knight isn't really in that category. In fact, he's probably one of my most played classes, despite being so new, just because that was like all I was playing for a while. Not even because I like the class that much. In fact, I criticized it pretty strongly. Like, the runes are an insular contrived mechanic. And uh, both the runes and the corpses are like, you know, that, that feels like a very contrived way to make everything revolve just around that class. Of course, other classes can get the corpse thing, but... So we're playing against either a bot or just some new free-to-play kind of clown deck. Deal one damage to minion, minions next to it. Fireball is okay, I guess. This is almost a deck where like it's a good problem to have, where you have just too many cards and you can't even play them, which is perhaps the nature of Priest in, in general, but yeah, you're gonna be generating more cards and burning them and whatever. So you weren't able to use Renathal, which, oh, so this deck is maybe vastly different. I kind of forgot, but no, I, d I don't remember. I don't think you were using Renathal on this at all. This is my second time only net decking since coming back in uh, end of last year. I did it once only for the Curse Warlock, and then I did it now just for sort of giving love to some of these classes and trying to give them an actual quality deck. 
sort of give them a fair chance to, uh, you know, I'm not gonna sabotage them just because I don't want to play as them. Like Rogue will be next. I've never played as Rogues. I kind of hate the way they work because they're such contrived things. Like they're nothing. I don't know how to explain it. Like they're mechanics that work only with themselves or each other. They're not. I'm like a fan of just raw value stuff. Like just summon something big. Like you think about Druids and Ramp or anything like that. Kaiba Jr. over here. Like just summon your blue eyes and just, you know, they can't deal with that. Because removal doesn't exist in the show, at least. Uh, let's see. It's not like I haven't ever played as these kind of decks, but I generally avoid them. Or like I said, Warrior would definitely have been the one that I love to do. Yes, the whole armor mechanic is so satisfying because you can technically get an infinite amount. So you can just kind of derp around. Or there was that buggy kind of deck that you could get like 1 billion armor as a druid in before plate breaker because i think it wasn't wild so you would have been able to do that but yeah you could there was some sort of infinite loop where you could just get infinite amounts of armor so yeah this isn't going to be as good as what it was before but we are still at bronze 10 so it's fine so like even this game that you know is going to be an easy win is still going to take a while because you're a priest that's the problem but it's the worst thing to ladder with at the low ladder right from bronze 10 to like diamond bronze 10 to diamond 10 you should use an aggro deck then from diamond 10 to diamond 5 you should use mid-range and then from diamond 5 to legend and legend 1 you should use uh control let's say and the reason why is because it'll just save you time it doesn't even matter about the quality of the decks you want to breeze through bronze 10 and silver and stuff because you know you're going to win anyway no matter what you use because you're going to be using a good deck and you're a good player presumably but you don't want to sit there for an hour you know eventuality playing control the whole way it's just boring but that's why like pirate warrior was one of the funniest things i did it sort of out of spite later on it was towards the end of of when it was actually good but then i go from like that was like the other rating system like rank 25 to rank 5 in like an hour or two hours right it was not because the win rate was even that great although it was good it's because even when you would lose you're gonna lose quickly you know the game's gonna be over so it, it gets a result fast it saves you time, and you're still making good progress. I don't think I got to Legend with it, though. I was just kind of derping around. But, I mean, it's just so stupid. That's the sort of thing I would almost just never use out of protest. Okay, this is good. You almost want to do it. Now let's get greedy and make a copy of it, too. Which, I don't even have that card. Yeah, this is why it's so good. It's just you can keep spamming that infinite value unless they somehow get rid of that card from your hand. This stays in your hand, but it stays in your hand if you play it. Does it stay in your hand if they somehow burn it or some other? Yeah, like what if I had 10 cards, then it wouldn't even go in your hand in the first place. Or they have, they use like a giant rat on her. They're, like there are ways to still play around her, but once you get this, it's very good. Or like I said, the really greedy play would be to try to copy her with that other card. Which I presume is part of the reason why it's in there. I've used it on him a couple times. I've rarely used the colossal mechanic actually in any anything over the years that was like when i first came back i was like so dumbfounded by what the hell does that even mean i had never seen the uh, the colossal mechanic before so and then i beat it in the epic game against the druid at like bronze 10 with the iron juggernaut the ultimate underdog you got to appreciate everything within the means that you have available like you can't deal three would be okay uh you know you can't judge anything except based on except based on like what it is that you're using so it's more impressive to win there right with that underdog trash deck than it is to win a legend with an actual amazing caliber deck <clears throat> okay let's just get this over with so we'll go with each of these till i lose i do i did want to try some other fun decks like i was doing uh i was trying like curse lock and imp lock just in the twist mode because sort of just playing into the class only cards and sort of paying tribute to that deck that I did use in September last year that nobody believed in, the Imp deck. Literally taking a deck recipe to Legend, which I don't know how commonly you can really do that. Maybe it's not that big of a deal, but you don't even have to net deck. You can just net deck within the game itself. You wouldn't think it would be that good is all I'm saying. And people asserted that it's not good, but... 
what do you want me to do to prove it's good? Like get to legend rank one or something? Which I never even really made an attempt to ever do that because it was so... Like by the time you get to legend, I'm just bored. Like it's so repetitive. Then it'll just be the same thing. That doesn't mean it's not hard, of course. It just means... You know what I mean? Like I don't even want to bother with that. You've already seen the same decks over and over and you've used the same deck over and over and now you're going to get it more of the same and just do like small little iterations, which can be fun, but a month's not really enough time for me to want to even do that, especially now. <sighs> and they don't even give you anything for it. Like, oh, they give you tournament points for a dead game that has no esports anyway. But like, you know, they don't give you a special card back. Shouldn't they give you one for Legend Rank 1? Like, that's kind of a big deal. Even people don't like the way the Legend card back looks, but you have to understand how long it's been around. They should either update it or... I don't know. Why can't I hold all these cards? What a priest says all the time. Or I'm not even using that. I don't know. I'm just kind of doing random stuff. Like, we're obviously going to win. This is just kind of a waste of time. But yeah, that's what can lull you into playing badly. Is like... You're winning this is happening in pvz heroes a lot like either you're such an underdog that your deck is so bad that you know you're going to lose the game anyway so you make misplays and, and do suboptimal things just because you know it's not a fair matchup so it doesn't matter but then you get in the bad habit so then when it does matter and you do have a chance then you'll still play badly so you you get sort of in this defeatist mentality like oh it's unfair so why even bother trying or trying to do it perfectly because you know you're still going to lose. Or it can be the opposite, like here, like, oh, you're playing down to your competition because it doesn't matter what I'm doing. Like, you're obviously going to win. It's just taking forever. Or yeah, like, they put this card back specifically there to show that it's a VOD, which is... At first, they weren't doing that, though. But I guess that's their sort of subtle way of telling you that it is one. It must be because we've seen that so many times. Why they couldn't make the bots a little better is beyond me. At least give them good decks or something. I never understand the concept of why they do that. Make me wait in a queue if you want to make me wait in a queue. Or like make the ranking system a little bit more uh, more broad. Like, okay, I can play somebody who's a higher rank. And they got rid of showing you what rank they even are. Right? So you could be playing against... You could be in bronze playing against a legend player. Which it sometimes makes it seem like that because... It is insanely competitive and, and bullshit sometimes with what people are using. I've had more epic moments at low ranks than high ranks, but mainly that's just because I use underdog kind of bad decks. They just get it over with, dude. <laughs> what were kind of the tough matches for this deck? I can't even remember. It was doing better. It did bad almost at first, and then it started to do a lot better. Or maybe I was just didn't know what I was doing with it. But aside from this, the Valk here, everything else is sort of more mid-range, just like basic stuff, removal. It's nothing really crazy. This is the state of mid-range gameplay in Hearthstone in 2023, where it would look like control, but it still doesn't feel like it. You don't even have like any 10 cost cards or like super high cost. I think your highest is seven and eight for the, the Whirlpool and, and this guy. This deck might not even be considered good anymore, but I didn't want to play in standard anyway. Or, you know, this would be so fun to do in wild, like, may, I'll, I'll make a class only deck. The problem is most of those elusive minions are not. I just have such an urge to play as that right now. I haven't played it in a while. I'm addicted to that effect. For years, I that would be all I would do with Hearthstone. Even when I wasn't playing it as much, I was just like, whenever I would, I would hop on, play a couple games with that, it would be like Jaina with, uh, Frostlit, Jaina, plus all the elusive minions in the game, basically. And just, whatever. It was just fun. I, I love making my opponent feel powerless in that way. Just, they can't target it with spells. And you have so many of them that it starts to wear on them. It was never good, but it was at least better then than it would be now. Because there's, they haven't really kept up with the elusive mechanic the way that, you know, Galakron was the last good dump of them that we've really seen. So by that logic, I could say that's my favorite expansion, even though I didn't really play during it. And I don't really like Galakrond as a as a hero. It's just more like, you know, if you look at the evasive thing, which it's not even a key word, but like can't be targeted, right? If you look at this, how many of them are in the current meta? There's those two cards, which aren't even minions. That's not a minion either. 
That, so you have like one, two things, and the fairy dragon is the old school one. So in the whole history of the game, this was like the only one you had for a while, I think. Right, and you had like the one from Ysera. Like there were very few for a very long time, and it, then you get Sogoth, but it wasn't until Ga the Galakrond expansion that you really got more. If you look in wild, I don't know why it won't let you even play a twist. Can't be targeted. Like how many are there total? That doesn't, it's amazing that they wouldn't even give Death Knights one minion like that. I was expecting more like because of Spectral Knight. You get two for Druid. You get one for Hunter. You get technically zero for Mage because it's not like an outright minion still. You get one for there. You get two for there, which I feel like you rarely see people actually use those. Uh, so you get one, two. So yeah, this is Galakrond. This is Galakrond. Oh yeah, this one you had for a while too in the game. This is Galakrond. This is Galakrond. So it might not seem like a big deal, but there's so few anyway. So this one's always fun. And what's the other one? I never really like the effects that make uh, that make the adjacent minions and this and that good because I don't know. Like this one's stupid. Your hero, I don't really care so much about. Your minions have can't be targeted by spells or hero powers, which does include itself, but it still doesn't really feel authentic to that. But maybe I should do that because you won't be able to have enough of those to really make it. Or you could make a deck that copies that like a million times and uses that effect over and over on other things, and then it would make it worth it. But just having like one or two of them is not going to cut it. Druid, Priest, Hunter. They won't let me play Twist, which is weird. What does that mean? Like, rule set every month. It's locked until the next season start. But like, what is it right now then? In less than a month. It's supposed to be a monthly format. It's not supposed to be like once per expansion. Yeah, I like how vague that is. In less than a month. Like, yeah. So does that mean like tomorrow or does that mean by the end of this month? You'd use that in real life. Like, oh yeah, when will you be here to pick me up? In less than a month. It could be in five minutes or it could be in a few weeks. Who knows? I never like to look anything up. Or these boards are going to be <clears throat> pretty cool too. My dear Malfurion. I never even looked at any of the cards that are coming out for Titans, but I do like the premise of it at least. <sighs> so, I mean, of course, the meta is going to be vastly different. I don't know why I thought these... I mean, it doesn't mean that a Legend Caliber deck from the past expansion would be bad then all of a sudden. But it won't be as good, obviously. Or who knows, it might be better because nobody's expecting that you would still be playing it and everybody's kind of theory crafting and trying to figure stuff out. It's always the ultimate way to show that hindsight bias is so strong. Like when people say, wow, like, oh, you know, these early raid bosses were so easy, right? Like in, in vanilla or whatever, but nobody figured it out at the time how to deal with them. And so what that means is, uh, next spell you cast could be twice, that could be good. What it means is that it took people time, and then once you figure it out, you figure it out. So it's easy to say that in hindsight, once you already have the answers. But then whenever something new comes out, it still takes people time to come to the right conclusion, right? Or figure out how it works. So for example, oh, it's... Wait. Well, don't have to do anything yet. So that's the point. Like, whenever a new expansion in a card game comes out... It'll take people time to come up with the best deck, but then once they do, then it'll at least act like second nature. Like, of course that's the best deck. Everybody knows that. It's obvious. What are you, stupid? But then again, it took you months or weeks to, to do it where you were using suboptimal decks because it's just not that obvious. So the people who come up with that are always so impressive, like the Drums of War Moorer strategy or the, the Channeled Warlock uh, Look Away from Yogg effect. That was so cool. Let's see what I can do here. I can silence them, which almost doesn't even seem worth it. I can do light bomb, which <clears throat> also doesn't seem worth it. <clears throat> I would rather it be the other way. Like that card is really good, but <clears throat> sometimes the uh, the alternate. Like, why are you playing that so early? I guess you'll make like a million different copies of it or something. It's not like you were in a very tense situation where my board is is very threatening or something. That's your ace card, but I think I have too much stuff to even want to do it. Or you know what? I will do it. Just do this. Do this. Now you'll be jacked out in your hand still. 
Yeah, like outside of Miracle Rogue, I don't know that I played as like any Rogue decks over the years. Or it would have been something weird. Why is he playing stuff like in such a banal way? Like the most suboptimal thing of all. Just he's just doing it just to do it, basically. <laughs> There's no guarantee this will actually kill it, so maybe that wasn't the best idea. But there was really no other. Okay. Or no, I obviously should have waited before playing, and I never really liked this guy though. It's too, it's too strong of a card and too contrived of a way, right? Like it just does everything for you. It'll deal two damage. It'll give you armor. It'll do 14 damage. Like just everything. But this guy is, doesn't seem like a bot, but he's playing like a bot. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can easily trade that in. Flame strike. Do this for the life steal, but you almost want to wait till you pull something in with it. Unless you make a copy of it. Like, let's just not do anything yet. Or did I just screw myself because I can't? That's a minion deals too. That's too bad. I don't know. I just have too much stuff. Or you can still do it. It's not like it matters. Uh, destroy with five attack. After you play an undead, you have a reborn. Problem is now you're going to burn a card. <clears throat> I could have just thrown away... One of those silences. He could have some crazy combo. I don't know what these things are that we're dealing with. But he's making such boneheaded plays. Yeah, what a convenient card to have for that purpose, too, because... What is he going to do next? Jade Idols to force my hand? You ever spell from your deck? Sounds a friendly minion. Deal damage to its attack equal. But we'll just keep doing that over and over in case he keeps doing that over and over. Problem is you'll feel compelled to play these as soon as you get them or I won't have room in my hand. So put an enemy minion on the bottom of your deck. Sure. Well, I can't even do it. I keep trolling myself. This deck is clearly so good that I'm I'm trying to make it interesting. That wouldn't even work on it. All minions with three or less attack. But that's actually a pretty hard one to deal with, I'll admit. It's a perfect opportunity for this guy. I almost do just want to play uh, play one of these just for the sake of it. Silence them, doesn't matter. Because I just want to make room for the Visions of Darkness and be able to keep slinging that out every turn. The most important thing from that is the healing. There was a time where this looked really good when the, the Lich King expansion came out. There were some really good armor druid decks, but people kept saying once again, I should have played as that to prove them wrong. That, oh, it's not that good, it's not that good. Okay, so... His attack values are a little bit weird. Each minion, which would include my own. Needs something that's just going to destroy his stuff without incident. All minions... Brown. Oh, that would be fun, too. Do we get the little voice line from that, uh, whatever, that Naga chick that I use on, on Illidan that says drown, drown every time she attacks? Okay, that works. All of the rest of his stuff is kind of useless. I'd right, put that down and fill out my hand even more. We're like, let's just throw away the silences. Ignore that. Go face like a true priest. Almost seems like everything he's doing is just a total random though. Like he's healing my stuff, he's he's wasting his Denathrius effect and his other one. Okay. Not really a big deal. These games just become tedious, but I mean that's just the nature of low level play anyway, because you know, even if you were using a faster deck, it can sometimes just be a waste of time. Destroy all minions with three or more attack. Deal two. Deal three to the hero. Destroy that. There's really not much else I can play, though. That's the big problem. <clears throat> discover a spell. Discover a copy of a card would probably be good because I certainly can't. Deal three damage to a minion. Next spell. This turn costs two less. Next spell you cast this turn. Unfortunately, I won't have one out of cards you cannot crack my 
one less armor. Like, wh what is he going to do? Yeah, he, he's totally a bot or just a clown player. Uh, just do that. But it's still hard to sometimes win at this point because you're not going to have any minions or he's going to have to. Oh, shit. Or no, I do get to keep both of them still. Here, I'll even throw that away, although there could have been a really cool effect. Maybe I could have done with that. Ball of armor. Wonder what it could be. What is he going to possibly do now? Just do the same thing. Destroy a minion. Doesn't even matter. Like, I just don't have anything I can do still. You're never going to kill him outright. He just played in such a robotic way. Like, whatever he has, he just plays. Problem is, you're... Whatever, like... Look how annoying it is. Even when you win, you still lose because you're losing your time. Sounds like I'm talking about chess. Like, it still pisses you off and it's still a waste of time. Whereas my other two decks are certainly not like that at all. The Illidan one and the, the other one. Death Knight. Which none of these are probably good anymore anyway. Uh, whatever. Oh yeah, stylish kill with the fatigue. Exactly this plan. <clears throat> yeah, the whole aesthetic and idea behind this expansion is always cool. Yeah, let's look at maybe some of the cards from it. For a seedlings, conservator nymph. But let's look for, yeah, like what is your cool legendary card here? A monthal. Oh yeah, I love this when you get the sideboard within a card, like the the stupid scythe of, of Illidan and stuff. Or what was the other one? Like where you get to choose between you get to choose between the three cards. I can't remember. After this, use an ability to discover any legendary minion. The leader of the Titans was the first to awaken. In his loneliness, he sought out other Titans across many different worlds, and together they formed the Pantheon. Cape the Stars. Choose a non Titan minion. Summon a copy of it with plus two, plus two. Wait, what does that. Oh. Strike from history. Choose two enemy minions. Remove them from the game. Summon a random six cost minion. So when it says remove them from the game, does that mean they can't be resurrected back? Because this game never had like a proper graveyard. So sometimes that that sound doesn't even make sense. Like the maid secret, remove it from the game. Like you mean destroy it like anything else? Like it's not really relevant to anything. See, if they misprinted the art, it's supposed to be that dog with the sword in his mouth from Dark Souls. Uh, she is Sif, she, he is Malagos. They're not the same person. They may have similar spell damage. They have similar colors, but they are different nonetheless. Yeah, who who would have confused Malagos with Sif, of all people? There's plenty of other blue dragons that would be closer along. Like even Caligos. Or yeah, let's just look at the legendaries, at least. I'm not going to look at every card. Kayla, shuffle all three plagues into your opponent's deck. Oh, this is going to be their contrived mechanic. Of having, you know, in insular mechanics here with the three choices or cards. All three plagues, plagues they draw this game are unending. Named after the first thing Odin said after landing a sick kickflip. Take two damage, restore two health to the enemy hero. Cast when drawn, but... They draw this game are unending, but it doesn't mean it'll do it every turn. Restore two health to the enemy hero. Cast when drawn, you take two damage. Next card costs one more up to ten. Cast when drawn, take two damage, summon a two two undead for your opponent. It makes it seem like it would do this every turn or something, but it's not because even if they're unending, it doesn't mean that like what? It would just keep recycling itself somehow. <clears throat> the Primus Titan uses like what does it even say for Titan? Like what is the Click on a Titan to use one of three abilities instead of attacking. Oh, instead of attacking, though. At least there's a price to pay. As there is a Pantheon of Titans, so there is a Pantheon of Death. 
comprised of powerful rulers in the Shadowlands. Total retcon BS. After this, uses an ability to discover a card with that rune. And some of this is maybe even Hearthstone specific retcon stuff. Like they make up characters like Rokara. I was like, oh yeah, she was probably some random NPC in AV that you just forgot about. But no, they actually just made her up for this game. When you have so much rich lore to draw from, why do you need to do that? And so it kind of confuses the issue because so much of the stuff is actually legitimately from the lore. <clears throat> Runes of Blood destroy an enemy minion. This minion and your hero gain its health. Oh, now this is breaking the rule of three things. There's four. The next spell you cast costs three less and adds plus three spell damage. Summon two, three, three undead with Taunt and Reborn. <clears throat> taunt Reborn. Oh, no, it's maybe just showing you. Which this game normally doesn't do. It'll mention stuff, but it won't tell you uh, what it is. Like create this such and such he doesn't look like a turtle jotun the eternal for the rest of the game or yeah i want to see algal on actually right? they always miss the opportunity to do the oh no they do actually have him like how they didn't do falric or morrowind for anything algalon's vision battle cry replace your hero power with algalon's vision that's so algalon it's the future he can see look at the top card of your opponent's deck you may put it on the bottom of their deck Keep another card on the top on the top of the opponent's deck move another card to the bottom of the opponent's deck okay that just seems like an annoying card but that means it'll be really good yeah, i don't even know when exactly the expansion rotation is on like what month is coming out because i don't really care i just kind of do whatever Titan argus emerald star so you fight him in uh in legion right after and he's basically like the de facto oh you're fighting sargeras because you're not but whatever you do with him leads to that cutscene that then leads to you like sort of banishing sargeras away so titan minions to the left have rush and the ones to the right have lifesteal once a proud titan i don't know if that was considered like oh you actually beat sargeras and that's the end of it like he's not dead but they kind of maybe moved on to other things after that. Once a proud titan, Argus was fated to meet a darker end. Sargeras and his demons would later corrupt him and shatter him to use his power for themselves. That's not really even a flavor text. Like, that's funny. It's just... It's, yeah, that's just factual part of the lore. Nice. Discover a death rattle minion costs three less. Reduce the cost of all minions by two. Summon four, two, two elementals with taunt. Okay. Yeah, since when do they show stuff that they talk about in card text? They've never done that. Freya, Keeper of Nature. Choose one, duplicate your hand, or summon copies of all other friendly minions. Oh, that's a pretty badass effect. Good things come in pairs. Good things come in pairs. Seeds of the future, duplicate your hand. Summon all copies. I mean, it makes it seem like you're paying eight mana for a two on top of that, but that's just her base effect. Or, like, imagine this with a, with a card that lets you do both choose one effects. That'd be insane. Okay, that's actually pretty fun. Aonar, the life finder who she always name drops. Protector of all living things. She once saved the nascent world soul of Azeroth from annihilation. It seems mercy was her greatest wisdom. Titan, after after this uses an ability, summon a 5-5 five, five ancient with taunt. Draw cards until your hand is full. You can do them every turn. Uh, you know, it's not like a battle cry effect, obviously. Draw cards until your hand is full. Restore your hero to full... What the fuck? I mean, it does cost 10, but... Refresher Crystal. Wow, Druid looks actually amazing. I just, based on the legendaries, I would say, out of what we've seen so far, like, these are okay, but I would rate Druids very highly based on these two. Or at least I find them interesting more than anything else. Refresher Mana Crystal. Very versatile, as Druids tend to be. Formerly a trusted lieutenant of Sargeras, Agrimar helped him fight the demonic legions across many worlds before he was corrupted. Agrimar the Avenger, Titan, equipped with 3-3, three, three. I forget how you say that. Tesselash. Maintain order. Give your weapon. After your hero attacks, draw a card. Give your weapon. After your hero attacks, summon a 3 3 with taunt. Give your weapon plus 2 attack. Your hero is immune while attacking. And then this is. This is the enforcer. Hodir, father of giants. Giant ladies. This one's a keeper. Good one. Set the stats of the next three minions you play to 8 8. That's a good effect, too. Like, do these really feel like hunter things though like they're not really hunters have become kind of weird in the last several years like there's so many mid-range and high end sort of control type things that they're trying to go for 
I guess they got bored of just characterizing them more so as aggro. Or they had like so many glory years where that was the main thing that they would do. Norganon, Titan, after this, used an ability, double the power of all other abilities, of the other abilities. His tremendous arcane magic was strong enough to save all the spirits of the Titans after Sargeras destroyed their physical forms. Oh yeah, this is something stupid with that too. He saved the spirits of the Titans, so, so uh, Sargeras already killed the Titans. Like all of them, I guess, which... That was never like explored in the lore and then they somehow come back and they help you seal him away once you kill uh argus or am i getting that wrong who is the guy you fight in legion it's not like i played any of these expansions argus the unmaker yeah as the final boss of antorus the burning throne the final raid encounter of legion Genitor's power deal five damage or 10 with the bonus effect. Enemy cards cost one more or two more and then cast one random mage secret. It's kind of weird what they did with this mechanic of, of choosing between three things. It makes everybody feel like a druid, but then... Or in fact, you're only getting to choose then between... T no, but that's just because that's not even a titan at all. Spell damage plus one. Yeah, why not some fun effect? Like, oh, you can't be... For the rest of the game, your minions can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Like, my, just my favorite one. All right, that one we've seen. Amethyst, the Peacekeeper, Titan, Taunt. Your minions can't be, can't take more than... So they even retconned a Titan. Like, their, their shame knows no bounds. Whether it be just in the Shadowlands expansion or whether it be just for this game. You, you can't even let it speak for itself. There's no such thing as a Titan to do with this. This is nonsense. Bold face bullshit retcon. As a champion of harmony, Amethyst abstained from the Pantheon's many conflicts until one day, shortly after the corruption of Targaryen, she vanished altogether. Your minions can't take more than two damage at a time. Reinforce, draw two minions, set their attack, health, and cost to two. Give your other minions plus two plus two. Set the attack and health of all enemy minions to two. Resurrect a two, three, and four attack paladin minion. There must be some very specific synergy. Brought me back to life, S tier card. Uh, as far as why that's good. But this one's not even a legendary minion. Yeah, a legendary minion of the past. Why not just play in wild format, which is objectively more fun because you could do whatever you're doing here anyway in that too, rather than have this illusion of balance, even though you're benef benefiting from power creep cards anyway. So it it's sort of a circular logic, right? The newer cards are always better. That's the nature of power creep and how any card game works. But on the flip side, that we can't use the old cards because somebody will come up with a broken synergy between them, even though those cards are worse, right? You even acknowledge, but you just can't accept the fact that it's never balanced anyway. So just have fun with it. Regularly participates in immortal combat. Death Rattle summon each other minion you played this game that didn't start in your deck. Okay, that could be very annoying. Titan after use uh, discover. Okay, we read this. The leader of the Titans of the first to awaken. After you play a mech, get a random one of Mimron's gadgets. Mimron the Mastermind. Wait, what? Oh, they're just doing that for meme effect. The way it's written. Voltron Prime. Long after the Titans of departure, Mimron dreamed of creating something with an approximation of their power. He may have actually succeeded. This minion's abilities repeat on another random friendly minion. Gain plus two plus one, deal four damage to a random enemy. These abilities repeat on another random friendly minion. So, I mean, it would still, it would repeat the, the two one, but would it then damage four to another enemy minion too? Plus two plus one, gain plus three health. Can't be, oh, here we go. The favorite card in the game then. Gain plus three health and can't be targeted by solid hero powers, but it's going to be a one off thing. None of these things are going to stick around, really. If you play a mech, get one of his gadgets, deal three. Give a friendly minion plus three attack. There'll be some kind of combo with this where you get like a million of these, right? And just do an OTK, but it's kind of hard to control. Turn a minion to its owner's hand. The next card you play this turn costs two less. Give a minion, taunt, and divine shield. Choose two minions, they swap stats. Thorim, Stormlord in the mountains, good one. Unlock your overloaded... Wait, but that would have been... Wouldn't that have been Hodir who said that? Why is it... 
disorganized flavor text zero out of ten expansion but see at least the premise of this one i like so they kind of alternate right the lich king expansion was a great premise obviously that's like their ace in the hole to pull out to keep people's interest when the game is dying out or whatever and then they do a garbage one festival of legends just the premise alone not saying even the quality of the gameplay or, or whatever the meta at the time just the Lich King one was good, even though they'd already done the Knights of the Frozen Throne. At least it had been a long time. Then the Festival of Legends is trash. Then this one is actually good because it doesn't need any qualifier. It's not like, oh, the Titans are using like whatever. They're they're playing instruments and doing stupid stuff. No, it's just the Titans. Like, oh, what kind of cool hero portraits will there be? Oh, Sargeras. Just without any any qualifier or subtitle to him. Just Sargeras. In the mountains. Okay, unlock your overloaded mana crystal. Draw that many cards. Titan, Golganath, the Thunderer. With dominion over the seas and the skies, Golganath fearlessly wields the power of nature to serve the Pantheon. Your first spell each turn costs three or less. Costs three less. Lord of Skies, deal what? Deal 20 damage to a minion. Draw three overloaded cards. Deal three damage to all enemies and restore... See, this seems kind of insane, but I mean, obviously. This removal. Sargeras the Destroyer, so we do get that. As well as the, the Hero Portrait. You should get like a hero card of it too, where you become Sargeras. Loken, Jailer of Yogg Saron. Yeah, this guy was kind of underrated and wow. Like the fact that he was considered worthy of guarding Yogg Saron, even though Yogg's in a weakened state, right? And he gets corrupted mentally. You have to understand that would mean that Loken would be almost as strong as Yogg at his best or something. That there's something wrong with the way, or at least like, you know, on par with him. So for him to just be the final boss in a five man dungeon like it doesn't entirely do justice that's that's one of the biggest underrated most powerful npcs in the whole universe like how can you just be they wouldn't have chosen him for that otherwise and he only succumbs because of the the mental thing not not that he's not physically strong enough to do his job really great is his job yogg saron cover a minion from your deck summon a tentacle with its stats and taunt yeah even here they do have an injustice six mana three three Incredible. Once again, warlocks get totally spoiled. Every major lore character in the universe who's cool is a warlock. Sargeras the Destroyer. They've been been waiting a long time with this one. And you know what I hypothesized could have been his effect. Or no, it was even Archimonde that I said. Like, it would almost work with a corpse mechanic. When 50 minions, if 50 minions have died this game, of either yours or maybe total, then you just win the game or something like that. Now, that was earlier in Hearthstone when I hypothesized that, but that could be a cool effect. Like, just if a certain number of minions dies, you just destroy the enemy hero. It could be a lot. It could be only yours. It could be uh, only theirs. Like, you could limit it somehow, but th there are effects like that in the game that aren't even that hard to achieve to just get an instant win condition anyway. Titan, open a portal that summons a 3 2 imps. That's really what you come up with for this? That's the. This is the most badass ultimate antagonist of the whole universe, and you open a portal with three two imps, like the one stupid quest, uh, whatever the warlock quest is that does the same thing. It's kind of a disappointing effect. Formerly the defender of the pantheon, he became dis disillusioned by his mission and formed the Burning Legion, destroy all life within the universe. To the void, send all other minions into the Twisting Nether. Summon two six six infernals from the Twisting Nether. Future demons summoned from the Twisting Nether have plus two health and taunt. At the end of your turn, summon two, two, three imps. Three, two imps. You gotta understand, this guy's the, the heavy artillery. You really think he deals in imps? He doesn't care about imps, man. But the, his effect should be summon two, six, six infernals, even if his stats aren't that good as what they are. Why are you dealing with imps? Fellblaze imp, fellblaze infernal. Like, come on. That That is the most boring effect that you've ever seen for a card and a character of that significance. Kazgoroth, creator of the Titan Forge races. Kazgoroth intended them to safeguard the world of Azeroth from corruption and discord. Nice job with that. They got corrupted by the curse of flesh and then became the races of Azeroth and completely fought each other and created so much discord and mayhem and even just uh, trampled over the world and, and destroyed everything and fucked everything up with magic and stuff. After this Titan used an ability, gain immune this turn and attack a random enemy minion. Titan Forge. Like all that whole mechanic that I, of course, never played at the time when it existed. Titan Forge gear or whatever. Gain plus two, plus two, draw a weapon. Gain plus five attack. Give your hero plus five attack this turn. Gain plus five health. Give your hero five armor. I wasn't expecting actually to, to be doing this today, but just I didn't even know it was going to come out. Like I knew this was the expansion, but I 
wasn't really paying attention. I was more focused on like, what is the twist mode going to be like? But they just tucked me from even being able to play it in the first place. But yeah, th this is such a, it's both cool and kind of contrived in the, in the lore. Like the fact that yogg saron is responsible for the creation of every sort of modern race on Azeroth in terms of, you know, the gnomes were created from Mimron's creations or the, the Vicryl became the humans or the, the, obviously the dwarven machinations became the dwarves by simply giving them the curse of flesh. He actually gave them the gift of, of life and reproduction or whatever that, right. That led to society. So yogg -Saron is basically your God in a good way, in the sense that you're as a human, as a dwarf, as a gnome, as a, what else? Like as so many different things, you're all a result of that. Like, so many of the races have a common origin, right? Humans, dwarves, gnomes come from that. The Curse of Flash and Yogg, specifically. Only that. And then uh, Night Elves, Blood Elves, right? All the elves come from trolls, who are like the OG race on Azeroth. They go to the Moonwell, they become Night Elves, they go to the Sunwell, they become, they become High Elves, Blood Elves, whatever you want to call them. And so the point is that you can trace like six of the races' whole existence in that simple form. Which maybe seems like they're they're trying to explain too much too simply, but all of that just came from Yogg and Ulduar. Like, unless there's some other retcon extrapolation, the whole human society and human existence and lore is just because of that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have existed. That's where you came from. Odin Prime designate for the rest of the game. After your hero gains armor, they get that much attack for that turn. After your hero gains armor. Okay, that's not too crazy. The best offense is a good defense, 30 defense to be exact. <sighs> Algalon is there. They missed a chance with the whole Falric Marwin thing that I said in, in the Lich King expansion. If you forge a card, craft a custom weapon, see, like, here, it won't tell you what those custom weapons are, right? Exactly the kind of tendency I was talking about. Eternal Flame, he has four health, and this led to that very cool, uh, whatever, Vedrim remix, where it's like burn in the baker's fire or whatever. That guy was classic. Flame behemoth. Isn't it flame leviathan? What is this? Always look both ways before ca crossing the formation grounds. Why is it called that? Get two random magnetic mechs. They cost two less. Use a character cast four random spells, targeting it if possible. We finally captured the oxen. I mean, you could just do it in like your opponent's face. You know what that kind of reminds me of is like the, the whole structures in black reach in Skyrim. We finally captured Yannick Saran. How should we keep him contained? How about an open pit right below us with four loose chains? Per chains. Perfect. I mean, you really can't contain him because the whole planet itself is his prison because he's so... Like, the old gods are much bigger than what you see their form as being anyway. Polar Garn, when... Rush whenever this attacks a minion, put it in your hand. Death Rattle, move any of your... Any in your hand to your opponents. So I'm just supposed to stand here forever or... Okay. So they, they seem to have disbanded the idea of, of hero cards. Like, which hero cards are even left in the in the game? In standard. This is how much I don't want to play as a priest. I'll even avoid it by... So they didn't make any Death Knight hero cards since making the class. Maybe they finally realized, oh, it's a bullshit overpower type of mechanic. There's at least one that we still saw, I think, in standard, but it's there's not too many left. And so they've kind of let those rotate out. I always found them to be a fun mechanic, but they're kind of insular and contrived in a way, too. Or Jirax is just a classic that never dies, but they gave them the five armor benefit, too. So they never nerfed the card that seems so they're crazy at the beginning of the game, but it's been both good and... Like, it depends, right? Obviously, what kind of deck it's in. But I'm surprised at the beginning of the game that people wouldn't have felt that way. You know, out of just pure jealousy. Like, why did they get that cool hero card mechanic that nobody else got to see for, like, what, five years or several years after that? So everybody was just jealous of Warlocks. And now they'll be jealous even more because they always get the best things. Nazoth is a Warlock hero. Targaryen is a Warlock hero and a Warlock card. Like, just always the most badass stuff is associated with them. I don't really have enough to craft stuff, or I have enough gold where I could maybe, like, let's buy 10 Titan's packs, because I don't know what else I'm doing with my gold anyway. Let's see if we get something cool. Put off playing as a priest the whole time. I just don't enjoy it, man. It's so time-consuming. There's got to be some way I can still do it without 
I have to get to a high rank first, and then at least it'll feel worth it. Golden for 400. Would that really be worth it? 1 to 50 packs. What is that? Oh, just... Let's do one of these, and then we'll do... No, actually, let's not. I just want to see a variety of cards. I don't really care what they are. They never had this option before either. So buy 11 of those bad boys. Let's see if we get a legendary. Hopefully, we get a priest legendary from there. Not that I even really want to play as one. I mean, the gold one would be... <laughs> the gold one would be there more just so you could, like... I don't know. So you could just disenchant it. Is mainly the reason why those kind of packs are sought after. Craftsman's hammer. Nothing crazy there. Even the packs look pretty cool. In fact, I'm sure there'll be some good card backs associated with it too. Or that you would have to pre-order and buy the shit to do. See, the joke's on them. I avoided getting Nazoth in the pre-order for like 80 bucks that you would have had to get it. Even though I so badly wanted it over the years and I've always wished for it. And then I get it for like $5 in the shop. Like last month or whatever. Just because I got lucky and they happened to put it back on. So I subverted the need. So anybody who spent that $80 on it feels like an idiot. Except they've been using it the whole time in between. Okay, well, I'm not playing as <clears throat> Warrior, really, so that's going to be stupid. In fact, that wouldn't count in my underplayed round robin at all, because that's one of my most played classes, Warlocks and Warrior, definitely, at the top of the list. Even Warlocks could be partly because of Renounced Darkness, but even on the ladder and stuff, I would do that a lot. Yeah, why not? Give me a Golden Legendary. So in only 10 packs, we do get a Legendary, which is still a better ratio than what we've seen in PvZ Heroes. But then again, I got like two in a row, so I can't complain. What I'm more salty about is not really getting a, getting a Hero card. That's really what I would have wanted. Yeah, is there like a really cool <clears throat> maybe card back in here like this one? Save all the best. And eh, that's not even that good. Titanic card back. All right, they could have done better. Like the, the pack itself should be your card back. That looks so badass. Yeah, I mean, for Sargeras, how can you say no to that? Right, that is one of the most badass heroes sought after in the history of the game. And, uh, you know, you also get the card as a warlock, which is utterly ridiculous. Like, you should, yeah, yeah, give us a hero card like that, too. That only warlocks get a hero card. And nobody else has one, not only from this expansion, but in the meta in general. Because all the rest of them rotate it out. Rub it in your face, even that you have Jaraxxus, too. Which, you know, again, isn't always going to be that good now, but it's just fun. Okay, I'll do a couple more as Priest, maybe. It's like, play two games as Priest, and the episode's already over. It's hard for me because I always like to take my time and soak everything in with what I'm doing, but it's also, like, I don't have that much time these days, or at least this is a very secondary series for me, so whatever. So we'll see what the twist ends up becoming. I'm kind of annoyed that they... Did it that way. I don't, I don't know what that means. So we're not in a season right now. We're just in a state of limbo that just doesn't count. Meanwhile, we would still be playing ranked and potentially progressing. Like, at what point are you not in a season? Either it's last season or it's this season. What does that mean? Not even like it's the first of the month. So we just started. It's the it's the sixth of the month. That's maybe the downside of playing once a week too. Is like you. You miss out on certain things or, or whatever. Yeah, you drop a loon the same way that Freya drops... Uh, what's her name? I already forgot. The other chick. The, the nature chick who's the other legendary titan card for druids. <clears throat> yeah, this is at least a good quality premise for an expansion. It's the same thing like when we had the conversation about Mist of Pandaria. Right, like people are defending and saying, oh, well the, well, the raids were good and the content was good. Nobody's questioning any of that, right? It could be the best expansion in terms of content, but separate the two, right? Two things can be true. The content, the raids, everything can be good or even great or even the best. Meanwhile, the premise can be garbage and the worst because it's just an ass pole panda uh, pandering to a certain like market to try to grab viewers and, and players there right appealing to the asian market that was objectively why they did it they even said as much 
right in, in business meetings and stuff like oh this should do really well in, in that market they're even cynically explaining to you why they do it but people still defend it oh no it's because there was that one panda mercenary unit in warcraft 3 like yes there was there was also goblin units goblins don't get their own expansion people say cataclysm but cataclysm is about a lot of different things Mr. Pandaria, the entire continent is to do with pandas, right? So even an established ingrained race entrenched in the lore like goblins or ogres or something like that, they don't get an expansion based around their continent, right, alone, because it wouldn't be that big Kazan and stuff, right? So they're just an addendum. They're just a part of a larger whole with the expansion of Cataclysm or whatever else, like Draenei or whatever other uh, races they add. None of those, yeah, my commentary bores you to death. Uh, the ultimate bait on stream snipers almost good, as good as hikaru's you know oh whoops i hope he doesn't do this move just knowing that it's a bad move and thereby also proving that he's sniping because chess players can't think for themselves or make bad moves on their own clearly wink wink but no it's like you it's one thing to add the panda as a race that's not the issue right they can add any race they want it still feels a little bit silly and like it's not really deserving of a front row seat that way in the major races of the game but to turn it into that is the ultimate fanboy defensive stuff. Like, second war, Uther. So basically, or you know what, I'll keep her because I always complain about not getting her. <clears throat> See, if anybody beats me with this, it would be quite a momentous occasion because it's just, at this low rank, it shouldn't happen. But then again, this deck is probably outdated by now already. Yeah, I don't play enough and I'm free to play. So how am I supposed to keep up if I was trying to keep up with, you know, being able to try fun new decks with the new expansion and cards? I wouldn't be able to do it. I need like a stockpile of stuff just saved up. That aspect isn't really that important to me, but anybody who does do sort of fun theory craft stuff like that probably does pay hundreds of dollars to be able to do it or they play the game every day. One of the two or probably both. Yeah, I love that with the whole Pandaren expansion, the idea that but this is a fun way to see all the new cars just by stealing them from your opponent. Whenever friendly minion attacks, give it plus two plus one. Restore four health. If you forge your card this game, I don't think I will forge your card though. Boogie down, summon two one cost minions from your deck. If your deck has no neutral cards, it actually doesn't. Imagine that. Set of minions held to 1-1 one, one, because we actually are still in the twist mode idea. What what a great card for twist, am I right? Almost as fun as Renounced Darkness would be, except they'll never you, let you use that. Oh, that one's really cool. What What is that from? It almost looks like something Fireside Gathering, but it's not, maybe. We're like, yeah, that's the best way to get gamers, nerds in their basements to uh, come out and play stuff to try to get a cosmetic like that one chick. The gnome warlock, right? Nemzi. You have to go to a real life event that you don't want to go to just to get a cosmetic in a game. In <clears throat> a digital card game. It'd be interesting to see how much money Hearthstone has actually made off microtransactions over the years. Okay, that we can save for now. It might be a surprisingly crazy amount, especially given what their investment into the game was. Was not expecting that. Uh... I almost don't even want to do it, but it's okay, I guess. One thing is you're going to definitely be very card rich. Life steal after your hero attacks, gain four armor. I don't really care too much about that. Although paladins can be scary if I probably would assume in this expansion. <clears throat> I kind of want to just get rid of that guy, but I really can't. Resurrect three different Paladin minions. <clears throat> now, does that mean that I would have had to have played them, or can I resurrect his from his side, basically? For your last attack, I actually will do it. <clears throat> Just because, again, what are you really saving your, your cards for at this point? Mother, we seek your counsel. <clears throat> Disciple, at the end of your turn, summon. Summon a 2-2 two, two, Earthen that gets plus 2, plus 2 for each other Earthen you've summoned this game. <clears throat> okay. You do maybe Holy Nova plus that. Doesn't really seem worth it, but... Again, we're going to have too many things out there, so we may as well just go for it. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, come on. I'll just use the getting the card back as a benchmark. <laughs> we did better even that September season where I wasn't playing that much. I guess I would play a couple hours instead of just like one hour. But <clears throat> basically, I would get like from bronze to silver one episode and I would only play like once a week. Then silver to gold the next episode and stuff like that. So... <clears throat> Right, that's no big deal. Just use some kind of lazy AOE, of which we have a lot. Deal three. Light bomb would be actually perfect here. <clears throat> Deal three. You got to kind of exploit the vision of darkness here a little bit, but he might not be letting me do that, or sometimes they flood the board too many goddamn times. You are a friend to the Earthen. Reporting for summon a 2 2 Earthen in the game. Plus 2 plus 2 for each other Earthen you summon this game. Okay, that effect is pretty annoying. And my Legend Caliber deck from last month is not going to live up to it, I bet. I can't even blame it now that this deck is taking so long, or this matchup would take so long, because... Why don't we just silence this clown's face? Go like this. Go like this even, just don't take a chance. We're going to have so many Echoes of Darkness to try to deal with this. Visions of Darkness, I mean. Because... Or it, both of those names would make more sense. Reflection of Darkness to imply keep getting it back. Or Echo. Yeah, we can definitely abuse this. We have that effect too. But yeah, we are using like Twist Caliber decks even in Standard. But I'm surprisingly low on health and I don't really have too much healing left, so I'm pretty much dead. Deal three to everything and then I have to deal at least one to... Uh, you could do this and like put this trick in there. That's good. But I only have six left and I'm sure it's very easy for you to deal with that, so we're already going to get schlonged by meta, meta abusers at Bronze rank 8. I mean, I guess it has been out for almost a week, but you can see how it progresses. Almost makes it so that they shouldn't announce cards until... The like, why would you be seeing this at such a low rank? But I guess it's not at a low rank because your minions can't take more than 2 damage at a time, which includes itself. Which, I mean, that is a killer thing because you need something that's just going to destroy it, period. Or silence to basically discover a spell, draw two cards, cost one less, hunt friendly undead, resurrect a minion that costs three or less. I mean, you could just keep playing this over and over, period. Yeah, the silence would be very handy here. But still, leaving anything out there is going to be very tough. And then plus two, plus one. We'll do that just for the heck of it. But I am just going to die. He's going to buff that or something crazy is going to happen. He's running a little dry on cards, but he's gotten great value of what he's done so far. But this is clearly a meta caliber deck that he's using, or at least it's good. We haven't seen the plus two plus twos come into play yet, but now it will. I mean, look at how much board clear I actually have. and Unfortunately, I don't have enough healing to deal with this, but you have to just hope that this is going to do something for you. The second one isn't Hasn't done much for me. After you play an undead, discover a spell. I don't know what is it that I'm going to hope to discover. Like, that would be good, but it's not going to happen now. Come on, why has it got to be this lopsided? What could I possibly get with one mana left anyway? Put an enemy at the bottom of your deck. Yeah, that's clearly going to save me. I wonder how this would have worked considering the fact that I'm not three different paladin minions or like even you would have played some just because of the fact that you're stealing their stuff but okay just don't forget about getting the card back if I don't well it seems unlikely that would happen though because I'm doing so much standard ranked anyway but just that one month it had to be that month that Tranquility is one of the best card backs ever that I happened to not... They let you buy it for gold, I guess, eventually, but it happened to be that one month that I wasn't playing Standard at all. This one's okay, I guess. 